Hi everyone and welcome to the Hair Loss Show. My name is Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash and in this episode we're going to talk about the role of finasteride post hair transplant. So stick around. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. All right, so if you uh, are losing hair, you've got male pattern hair loss, you're losing hair, and you've considered the option of having a hair transplant or have had a hair transplant, at some point in the process, you should have had a discussion about finasteride. We've talked on multiple episodes about finasteride. It actually blocks the 5-alpha-1 uh, reductase enzyme uh, and to try and lower the level of DHT in, in, the, in the system and therefore stop the progression of hair loss. Now a hair transplant essentially is filling up an area that doesn't have hair with hair and you're using hair from what we call the donor area to do that and that hair is generally strong hair, strong healthy hairs and uh, for one of a better term resistant to, to DHT so essentially they're, they're going to be there long term and not affected by DHT and or finasteride obviously but it's the remainder of the hair that is under the influence of DHT and therefore that's where finasteride becomes useful because what we're trying to do is to stop the progression of the hair, uh, hair loss. So for example if you've lost hair in the frontal hairline and the hairline has moved back and you want to rebuild that frontal hairline when you create that hairline you pack the density in those hairs will be there long term. It's the hairs behind that where your hairline was naturally before potentially at risk of that hairline moving further back and in order to try and stop that that's where finasteride uh, becomes useful. So it's useful to protect the existing hairs. It doesn't have any uh, influence on the transplanted grafts and it doesn't have any influence on the rate at which the transplant comes through. But it's there to try and stop the existing hairs from falling out. So ideally you want to have had a chat with your uh, doctor about this beforehand. Ideally you, you would want to be on finasteride and in an ideal world show that you're stable on finasteride because if you can demonstrate stability on the medication then you know that re in this example rebuilding the frontal hairline that's going to be okay because you're less likely to move uh, the hairline further back as opposed to someone who is not stable on, uh, despite being on finasteride, where you know that there potentially there's a risk of further hair loss and then the requirement of further uh, hair, hair transplants uh, to fill in that area. So ideally you want to be on the finasteride beforehand, ideally you'd like to show that you're stable on the finasteride beforehand and then continue the finasteride you know, during the process of you know, having your hair transplant procedure immediately post-op and, and, and continuing on because they're essentially doing two separate things. Again, the hair transplant's putting new hair into an area that doesn't have hair and the finasteride is trying to stabilize the existing hair and stop that from falling out. So I hope you found that uh, useful. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you again on the next episode. Take care.